Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year. It's not January yet, but it is the first Sunday of Advent, which is the beginning of the new church year. And uh, the theme for our service and the series for Advent is Come Lord Jesus. Familiar words from our mealtime prayer. And today we focus Come Lord Jesus as King. Uh, the candle here is the candle of hope or prophecy. And uh, for good reason, the sermon text for today is the prophecy of our coming Savior and King. Uh, from Isaiah chapter 2, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his paths, so that we may walk. Teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. Okay. We welcome all of you, especially those, also those who are joining us from our, our recorded service. Uh, and our opening hymn, hymn number 309, The Advent of Our King, 309. <laughs>
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our service continues on page 190 with the response of Canticle, Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Protect us by your strength, and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe see seated for our readings. Thankfully, I'm getting over my cold, but I still have a sore throat, so I've asked uh, uh, Brian Miniman to cover our readings for today. Thank you, Brian. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. <coughs> this is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the, mountain, of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord to the temple of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in, the, in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the, the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into the plowshares and their spears into the pruning hooks. Nation will not take up a sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the war. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn to Psalm 24a, and we will be singing the refrain, and, uh, and then... Uh, the, the, the verses we will uh, say. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
face, with the law be changed to us, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation which is found on bulletin page number four.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all on this first Sunday of the day. Amen. Our sermon text today is our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2, the first five verses. I'll read just the first two verses. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. This is God's word. Let us pray. Savior of the nations, come. Come with peace. Come with forgiveness. Come with the sure assurance that we will not die but live. Forever with Jesus in heaven. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ our Savior. It was the verses of this past week in Meditations, the closing verses of Revelation, where Jesus said, Look, I am coming soon. And we responded, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And though it's not my habit to read from the pulpit, I would like to read the devotion from yesterday, from Meditations, which really summarizes not only today's service, but the theme for the Sundays in Advent. Come, Lord Jesus. Today, come as our King. When I was a boy, before every meal, my family would pray, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Admittedly, my mind would often wonder to how hungry I was, how good the food smelled, or how quick I needed to be to beat my six brothers and sisters to the best piece of chicken. I have six brothers and sisters, too. It wasn't until I got older that these that, that I truly appreciated these words. I was asking my Savior God to honor us with his presence, to be with us and bless our food and time together. However, that simple prayer, come Lord Jesus, is fitting for much more than family dinners. Come Lord Jesus and watch over me as I sleep. Come Lord Jesus and help me with this marriage problem. Come Lord Jesus and give me peace as I attend my mom's funeral. Every moment of every day, a Christian can and should pray, Come, Lord Jesus. As Christians, we eagerly ask our Savior to come and bless us here on earth. We confidently pray that he will come and help us in times of trouble. He is our help. He is our guide. He is our comfort and strength when the earth quakes and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. But in the last verse of the Bible, the prayer, Come, Lord Jesus, points us beyond the food on the table and the needs uh, and troubles of life. It is really a prayer that God would take away the needs and troubles of this life and replace them with undiminished blessings in a new and perfect life. The Lord had said to John, Look, I am coming soon. To that, the Apostle John joyfully responded, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. What a fitting way for God to end his revelation to us. We too can pray that simple prayer because Jesus lived and died to wash away the filth of our lives. We don't need to be afraid of Judgment Day. God has already told us what the verdict will be. All those who believe in Jesus have been declared innocent of all charges. We are forgiven forever because of Jesus. Along with John, when Jesus says he is coming soon, we joyfully respond, Come, Lord Jesus, because we know he is coming to take us to live with him forever in paradise. Pray that simple prayer every day of our life. Pray it with confidence. Pray it in eager anticipation. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, not just the mealtime prayer, uh, but uh, and our Christian response to Jesus, I am coming soon. But it's also the theme for our, our four uh, Sunday Advent services. Today, come Lord Jesus as King. Next Sunday, come Lord Jesus as Judge. In two weeks, come Lord Jesus as Messiah. And then in three weeks, come Lord Jesus as Emmanuel. As I mentioned earlier, uh, 
It's our practice here at Emmanuel, also in town at St. John's, to light the candles of our Advent wreath. And uh, the candle today is the hope or the prophecy candle. And before us today is our Old Testament lesson, which is the prophecy of our coming King. And so we pray, come Lord Jesus. The Gospel lesson for today, familiar, but you're wondering probably, and it was pointed out in today's devotion from Meditations, isn't that Palm Sunday? Isn't that when Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem that Sunday before Easter? And it is. But it's also fitting. It's the, it's the proper, it's the prescribed gospel lesson for the first Sunday in Advent. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hosanna actually means save now. Because God's people then and now need saving. And that's the focus for Isaiah the prophet, 700 years before Christ, whom God sent to the people of the southern kingdom of Jerusalem to repent, believe in the promise of the coming Savior and the King. The King who uh, would establish his kingdom on the hill, not a physical hill, but on the Mount Zion, where not only the Jews, but Gentiles too, would stream to that hill to be in the presence of the Lord. And what would the result be toward the end of our, our, our verses here? That war would transform into peace. May God be praised and may we be blessed as we uh, study these verses from Isaiah chapter 2. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord. From Jerusalem. So what is this hill that uh, Isaiah saw in this vision? Uh, when you might think of Mount Zion, the physical geographical uh, hill on which uh, the temple in Jerusalem was built. And it was anything but a mountain. It wasn't even as big as Observatory Hill, which is south of town. And yet, it wasn't just the height of that mountain, it was whose temple was built there. It was the temple of the Lord, the one true God, representing that he had his presence among his people. Even though the people didn't deserve it. Isaiah's prophecy begins in chapter 1 with a call to repentance. He says, Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his master, the donkey his owner's manager, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. How have they done that? Well, just like today, uh, people exchange worshiping uh, the true God for the gods, the false gods of, of, of greed and pride. Greed, that I'm not content, no, I want more. I am what I have. And then pride, I am who I am. Pride goes before the fall. And when God called Isaiah later on in, in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah uh, sees the Lord and his angels. And he says, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I live among a people of unclean lips. And, and I am a man of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then the Lord sent an angel who, who took a coal from the altar beneath 
the Lord's throne and touched Isaiah's lips. See, I have touched your lips, your sin is atoned for. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah accepted the Lord's call. Here I am. Send me. Send me. The call to preach both the law and the gospel to the people of Israel. To call them to repentance. To call them to faith in the promised Savior. And think of all the beautiful prophecies in Isaiah, many of which we'll cover this next month or so in our sermons, uh, from, uh, through the eyes of Isaiah. And as I mentioned first here, it's a prophecy of hope, not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, like us. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his way so that we may walk in his paths. We might think, really? Is everybody uh, crowding around church this morning, wanting to go to the house of the Lord? Or are there many who maybe find better things to do? It's human nature, right? Ah, I can always put off later what uh, um, is meant for old people or whatever. Yeah. Uh, before uh, the Lord calls me, yeah, I want to enjoy life. And that's what the people of Israel were facing. Eat, drink, and be merry. But Isaiah called, uh, or God the Lord called Isaiah to confront them with their sin. To announce impending judgment, not only uh, to the northern uh, kingdom of Israel with the Assyrians, about a century later, the southern kingdom of Judah with the Babylonians. And yet, many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. One book in the New Testament is sort of a summary of the entire uh, Old Testament, and that book is the book of Hebrews. We don't know the author, but we do know his audience, written to the Hebrew Christians, Jews. And he writes in chapter 12, You have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Some in Jesus' day thought that they were God's chosen people because of the blood running through their veins. They were the Jews, right? And yet, 40 days after Jesus' birth, uh, it was Simeon who held Jesus in his arms and uh, prayed the, the words that we oftentimes sing. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, uh, which you have prepared for the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. He recognized the Savior. He recognized that Jesus is the Savior of all people. And all people, Jew and Gentile, who need their Savior, will stream and go up to that mountain. In these last days. Uh, the days between Jesus' first coming as a baby in the manger and his second coming uh, as the king on his throne. The days in which we are now living we call our end times. But our text goes on, uh, Isaiah's prophecy, not only that Gentiles too will go up to the mountain of the Lord, but that what was once war will become peace. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The people of Israel then, even us today, there's just wars and rumors of wars. Whether our nation is involved directly in those wars or uh, supporting those who are fighting directly. Um, right? Uh, 
swords, the spears, the guns, the missiles, uh, the international wars, or even the domestic wars uh, here in the U.S. But one thing that God promises that the wars will cease, and the Prince of Peace will bring that peace. First, uh, between a holy God and sinful people. Just like the angels told, told the shepherds, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Right? Um, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. As we celebrate Holy Communion, this is the peace that passes all understanding. That in true faith, as we receive the bread and wine, we also receive Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, the strength of our faith, uh, the peace of mind we have knowing uh, we have peace with God. And Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful prophecy this is from Isaiah, the second chapter. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And who are the us? Both Jews and Gentiles, because we all need saving. And what's there? Perfect peace, which the world cannot give. So, dear friends in Christ, come, Lord Jesus. As we offer this prayer, whether it's mealtime or different times during the day, we do that during this season of Advent. And today, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Please stand, turn to page 196 in the, in the hymnal, and join me as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Uh, page 196. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. continues with our prayers. First, a prayer for the season of Advent, and then secondly, a prayer for those who are sick and suffering, facing other trials, listed on page six in the bulletin. And this week we had uh, Melissa Prater, who had open heart surgery uh, on Monday, uh, Jennifer Strauss, who injured her head and suffered a concussion, so she's recovering from that, and then also uh, uh, Paul Weldon, who is hospitalized down in Portage today. 
We also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for three <coughs> kids that were baptized on Wednesday at their home. Uh, Colette and Caden, twin uh, brother and sister, who also are in first grade at our school. Little brother Mason, who's a three-year-old. And these are the children of Clay and Treva Campbell, again, baptized at their home on Wednesday. Let us pray. Dear Savior, the prophet Isaiah once prayed, Oh, that you would rip open the heavens and come down. Stir in me an unquenchable hope that you will ride in the clouds of heaven one day and take me to our, my eternal home. Do this by reminding me how and why you came to our earth the first time. You emptied yourself by taking the very nature of a servant. You humbled yourself and became obedient to the point of death. All and only because of your mercy for a sinner like me. Heavenly Father, in your selfless love, you gave your Son for a world filled with hurting, struggling sinners. Confident of your compassion, I ask that you give strength and relief to those who endure relentless, debilitating pain. Through your Spirit, bring peace to families torn apart by strife. Provide stable and satisfying jobs for those who struggle to keep a roof over their heads and food on their table. Merciful Father, we thank you for the blessing of baptism, by which you offer and grant the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptism as the robe of righteousness we are to wear all the days of our life. Look with special favor on Colette, Caden, and Mason Campbell, and grant them a rich measure of your spirit, that they may grow in faith and godly living. Make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time we ask that our offerings uh, please be brought forward. And if you haven't yet, please uh, leave a record of your attendance today using our cards, the plastic one with your smartphone, with your code, or the paper ones.
Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, Strengthen our fellowship and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Uh, 524, Rejoice, the Lord is King, 524.
you all for coming. Uh, special thanks to our visitors and also those who joined us on our recorded service. Uh, we thank those who served in today's service, especially Brian, who I asked at the last minute to cover the reading. Thank you so much so I can save my voice for the sermon and for our service in town. Uh, calendar for the week, you'll find in the bulletin on page 7. And please note that this coming Wednesday, we begin our uh, Wednesday Advent devotions. Uh, angelic Advent announcements. Angelic Advent announcements. And uh, this uh, Wednesday to Zechariah, uh, the father of John the Baptist. So stay tuned for that. So six, uh, 3.30 here at Emmanuel and 6.30 in town at St. John's. Uh, also, I was asked to uh, announce this, that uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock we'll have our Advent by candlelight here at Emmanuel. Uh, there's still room for a few more ladies, so uh, here at Emmanuel, sign up in the parish hall. I'll also announce this at St. John's, and they can contact Sue Stelter if they can come. Uh, today, the first Sunday of Advent, uh, we begin our new meditation, so if you don't have a copy, uh, please take one. Uh, they're there in the little hymnal rack at the end. And also our, our new administrative assistant, our secretary, Matt Cott, printed some Christmas cards, a Savior is Born, and on the back side, uh, the list of uh, special services uh, for this coming Advent to the Christmas season. So take a copy of that. Some people like to include them in their Christmas cards as they nail those up. <coughs> uh, calendar for our special services, you'll also find on page 9 in the bulletin, the same information that's on the card. Again, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm glad that finally I'm over my cold. Just have a scratchy tonight, so uh, stay healthy, everybody. And a blessed, happy new church year to you. I'll forego saying handshakes back there. I'll just say virtual handshake from up here. God bless you all.